nothing fancy today. Just a one box hunt of nickels. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and I'll be hunting a nickel box today. Pretty excited about this one because it's from a bank I don't get nickels from too often and when I do, they're the kind of boxes that have the nickels standing upright like this. And so it's weird to get a Wells Fargo bank box with a Chase style, if you will, bank box. So I've checked them. There's uh, circulated nickels in the box, which is a good thing. And you guys know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for war nickels, which are the nickels from 42 to 45 that have the mint mark on the back above the Monticello. And I'll be looking for old Jeffersons. Obviously, I'd be loving to find some of the key dates and looking for errors and varieties as well, if we can find them. And you know it. We'd love to find some buffaloes or some V-nickels. It's been a while since I found a V-nickel and uh, I'm itching to find one. That being said, let's kick off the hunt with this roll right here and see if we can find ourselves some oldies. Roll number three and we found our first 40s nickel of the box, a 1949 Philadelphia. Had it been the Denver, we'd be checking for the D over S mint mark, repunched, but it's not it. So let's continue with the hunt. Roll number 14, it was an ender, but it was facing me reverse side, so I didn't know. But we got a 46 Jefferson nickel here, and it's out of Philadelphia. Well, we just grabbed roll 21 out of the box, guys. And I always check the enders. And look at this. A buffalo ender. And I'm betting there's not going to be a date on that bad boy. It looks pretty slick. No date, but we've got a Buffalo Ender. Buffalo Ender. I think about you all the time. All right, let's see what it is. Well, that's a bummer. It also looks like it may have been nicodated once before. No, nah, maybe not. I could just be seeing things. It looked a little funny. Oh, it just got some damage. Okay. That's tough. Man, this thing is worn pretty slick, and I don't think it has a mint mark either. But if you're seeing what I'm seeing, you can see it's definitely a type one. That's the raised mound. So we know it's a 1913, and I thought that last number was a three at a certain light. So, we know it's a 1913 raised mound. Let me mess with it a little bit without nicodating it first and see if I can catch a mint mark. As a matter of fact, why don't we just stick it under the microscope first? So, we know that's the F I V E. Looks like something is right here where the mint mark would be. And it could be an S, but we can't see the sense because this is the E right here. And then the mint mark should be right in this area, which there is something here as well. And then the uh, C would start here and you can kind of make out the E right there. So this should be the area of concern. And I can't see if that's a D or if that's the top of an S or if that's just damage. I'd hate to have to nick a date a 1913 Buffalo nickel, which we know it is because of the raised mound in the back, just to see if there's a mint mark. Let me think about this for a second. I'll be right back. All right, guys. It's a 1913 Buffalo Type 1 Philadelphia Mint, and it destroys my ugly one that I have in its place. So it'll upgrade that. Again, it's beat up. But as you can see, it's better than the spot holder I have in the book. So we'll be adding it to the book, but it's always good to get a buffalo in the box. 1913 Type 1 Philadelphia Mint. Nice. Roll number 31. 39 nickels and a dime. I'm not mad at it. We take dimes. Be nice it would have been silver. But instead, it's a 2018 D. Roll number 34, 
And look what we got here. It's another 1939, but you know it's going to be a Philadelphia no mint mark. That's what I find. And Bingo was his name, Mo. It does have a little bit of damage just to make it a little more fun for me, but no mint mark. We'll still take it. 1939P is the second oldest of the box because we got a buffalo. Roll number 35, and um, I'm 99% sure we've got a silver here. And on my live stream last night, one of my viewers said, Rob, can you please explain to me how you can tell it's silver from the edge? And I want to just go ahead and show that. First of all, most silver will have kind of a greenish tint. You can clearly see it right here. It's got kind of a greenish tint. Now, don't let that fool you. A lot of nickels, like that one down there, could just be dirty. So I always look for the green tint, but I also look at the edges. And if you look at the edges, they're a little rounded. They're just a little more rounded than they typically are for most nickels because they're older. So I'm pretty certain that that one's going to be a war nickel. But we'll pull it out just to make sure. And sure enough, right there. You can also tell it's a war nickel because it has the mint mark above the Monticello. And if I use my coin mat as an example, there you go. The letter P. Now they're usually worn slick or pretty slick like this one is, but let's see what it is. And it's a 1943 P, which is one of the errors and varieties you wanna look for. It's called the overdate. It's when they made the 1943 punched over like a 1942. So I'm going to take a look at it under the microscope just in case. All right, so there's the three. You got some uh, craziness going on there, but I don't see the markers of the 43 over 42. Let me go ahead and take a closer look after wiping it down just with a lick-free cloth, see if I could free up any of that debris. All right. I've wiped it away. I want to point out that what you're looking for on the 43 over 42 uh, over date is you would clearly see a little light line in here because the two would go like this and come across. So you would see part of the two coming through here as well as a base down here. And I know now that I'm touching the screen, it kind of looks like you could see something here, but it would be a lot more pronounced than anything here that you could see. When I back up, that kind of goes away. But yeah, it would definitely be a two like this. And I don't see, we have a little bit of curiosities down here and a little bit more curiosity down here, but I don't see anything that's saying, yeah, that's it. Anyway, that's what you're looking for. I'm gonna spend a few more seconds on this, maybe wiping it down one more time just to double and triple check, but it doesn't look like a 43 or 42 to me. So the good news is we got a silver war nickel in the box and uh, now we got a buffalo, a 30s nickel, and a war nickel. Can you find a V-nickel and a proof and get all of them? Let's get back to the hunt and find out. Well, that Wells Fargo box of nickels is hunted, guys. And you know what? It was actually a pretty good box. We got uh, a couple from 59, 58, 57, 55. It was a 55D, but it's not the D over S. Three 54s. One's an S, but it's not the S over D. We did get a 53 in there. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with the 52 Denver. That's a good semi-key date. And a 51 Denver, another semi-key date. We got a 49 D, but it's not the D over S. 48, a 43 P war nickel. Always feels good. A 39, no mint mark, still a good find. A 1913 Type 1 Buffalo, possible mint mark, but I don't think so. I think it's just a Philadelphia. It'll upgrade in my book. We did find a pretty nice look in 1964, which I hold on to when they're this nice since they're heavily circulated normally and look like junk. We found a dime and a couple of 09s. Pretty good box. We got a buffalo. We got a silver. We got a 30s. And we got some other finds as well. Some, some semi-key dates, the 51 and 52D, definitely. Hopefully you enjoyed this dig home with me. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.